friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that I've been given the pleasure to introduce myself to you, I'm Vanessa Semina and welcome to the fam. So you guys, today we're going to be figuring out what they secretly want to tell you. So this is all nitty gritty stuff that they're keeping from you. So if you're just as interested as I am to figure out exactly what they're thinking and what they secretly want to tell you, but haven't had the <laughs> to tell you, then make sure that you stick around and pick one of these four groups. So the way it works is that you pick one of these four crystals, which corresponds to one of these four piles of cards and use the timestamps that are down below in the description box as well as pinned to the comment section to fast forward to the reading of your choice. And once you get to the reading of your choice, that is where all the ooh, ah, what a bitch. I cannot believe that. That is when all of those moments and facial expressions start. So you guys, regarding the four groups, they are as follows. We have the black obsidian right here, we have the pyrite, we have the tiger eye, as well as the diopside. But if you need a minute to meditate on the four groups in order to make up your mind, then feel free to pause the video right here in order to do so. And in case you haven't noticed, I've been having a K-pop moment and I have been loving it. If you know me, then you know I go through phases, I go through different looks, and it's just fun, okay? My channel is all about that, being yourself, having fun, and embracing each other. And that is why I just love my comment section and why I'm so active and engaged, because you guys are just awesome. You guys get it, okay? And it's so hard to find people these days who get it, but the Unicorn fam, you guys are always there. You guys get the vibe. It's just all love around here. So yeah, guys, enough of the intro. I wanna get straight into the readings. I'm going to be starting off with the first group, which corresponds to the Black Obsidian, and to all the other groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Black Obsidian group number one. This is a highly protective stone that can also help protect you against negativity as well as radiation. But let us move straight into your reading to figure out exactly if you maybe need to protect yourself from this person and their thoughts. Let's see what they secretly would like to say to you. We have contemplation as well as breakthrough. So group number one, one thing that I see that they would secretly like to tell you is the fact that they feel like you can relinquish a little bit more control. So group number one, are you low key kind of a control freak? I mean, I'm not trying to call you out, but you guys do call me the queen of calling you out. So maybe that is why you are here in this reading because you micromanage or you like to be in control of a lot of things that maybe would be better for you to just like chill out a little bit, group number one. In Breakthrough, one thing that I see here is that they secretly would like to tell you that they feel as though they would like a new beginning. They would like a fresh start, okay? So maybe things have been a little bumpy in this relationship. Maybe you feel as though things have been okay, but you maybe got off on the wrong foot or on a foot that is not as good as another foot. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely see here that they wish that they had a second chance to start all over again. And furthermore, in contemplation, I see that they're keeping a lot of things silent. They're keeping a lot of things to themselves just because they secretly want to tell you, but they're a little bit afraid of how you may react. Furthermore, one thing that they secretly would want to tell you is to take the leap of faith. And a lot of people keep this to themselves because they are afraid, okay? Just think about it. If you're confronted with taking a leap of faith, a lot of people want to tell you to watch out, to be careful, maybe not to take the leap of faith because the odds are stacked against you. But actually the odds are only really all that against you when you don't believe in yourself. And the majority of people, when it comes to taking a leap of faith, that's why it's called a leap of faith. It's scary. The majority of people do not 100% believe in themselves. So they feel as though, hey, the odds are stacked against you. So do not take that leap of faith. But this does not need to apply to you, okay? And just because people aren't saying out loud how they actually want you to take the leap of faith because they're worried and they would rather just say nothing or tell you, hmm, are you sure? And in 
instill that kind of insecurity within you, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. So group number one, if you're standing before a situation where you can take a, a leap of faith, where you can do something to drastically change, improve your life, don't be afraid to do so just because of these vibrations that are in the air around you. Then we have adventure as well as isolation. So group number one, one thing that they secretly would like to tell you is the fact that they feel as though you can get out of your shell a little bit or they feel as though maybe you're very um a very private person okay there are a lot of things that they would like to ask you a lot of things that they would like to speak to you about that they're a little too chicken to say or a little too chicken to ask you about just because they know that they may not get a response back or they feel as though they may not get a response back Furthermore, here in adventure, they feel as though you're somebody who can have a little bit more fun, okay? So group number one, maybe you're kind of a homebody or you're the kind of person who is very introverted and doesn't like to go out too much. And I want you to know here in Discovery that they would secretly like to tell you that, you know, the world needs you. The world needs you at your finest, at the core, who you truly are. There is no reason to keep it isolated, to keep it hidden you are unique and i know that in this day and age like we call everybody unique and embrace yourself and embrace everything that makes you you but it is a fact there is no second you out here in this world and if everybody would have thought to themselves well there are almost eight billion more people surely i'm not that unique then there wouldn't be these breakthroughs in society in science in so many different fields of humanity and of things that make the world as progressive as it is now. You know, if people would have thought to themselves, I'm not that special, I can't make a change, then changes would have never occurred because oftentimes it took people taking out of the box, thinking out of the box, and taking that leap of faith in order for change to occur. So why not you? There have been single people who have changed entire nations, who have changed the world completely. So don't feel as though you're just like a little speck of sand on a beach, okay? You're so much more than that if you see the potential in yourself and if you go after the things that you want to go after. Then we have attachment, we have apprehension, we have the nine of hearts as well as a goddess of creation. So group number one, one thing that I see here is kind of like they feel a lot closer to you than you may have ever expected and they're kind of like really afraid here to tell you how they truly feel, okay? In attachment, one thing that I see here is that they're very afraid to let go of this persona that they have around you right now. So whenever you meet people, you have a certain persona, you have a certain side of yourself that you show them because you're not gonna just like on the first date or the first time meeting somebody, you're not gonna just be the truest you. You're going to conform a little bit. You're going to try and show yourself from your best side, obviously, you know? So that is just how things work in, in society. Let's not lie. Let's not pretend like we tell everybody our deepest, darkest secrets or we will get as mad at somebody that we don't know as somebody who we love and care about and know very closely, which is actually really weird, but Another topic for another time. I just want you to know here that they are afraid to let go of this persona that they have showed you because they actually care a lot more than they have showed. They actually care a lot more deeply and you resonate with them on a level that is completely different to other people. One thing that I see here in the Goddess of Creation is the fact that you have transformed them more to wholeness. You spark this kind of creativity up in them that they have not felt in a long time and they're really afraid to lose that, okay? So they are apprehensive to tell you how they truly feel, but it's kind of like their ego is more in the way here than what there is to gain. So what I mean by that group number one is the fact that they don't want to tell you how they feel and they want to keep this facade facade up all just because they need to protect their ego and they want to protect you know how you view them they don't want to seem vulnerable and they don't want to seem as though there's somebody who is not as strong as you okay they want to be the stronger person they want to be the rock they want to be that how should I say? So if you were to say it in this way, kind of like a stereotype man, you know, the protector, the provider, and so on and so forth. And then we have the moon, we have the tower, we have the shadow, as well as the page of shells. Okay, so 
Group number one, in the moon, I want you to know that this further feeds into the fact that they maybe are even deceiving you a little bit, okay? So this is something that they secretly want to tell you that they're most likely a lot more vulnerable than they let on. They're most likely a lot of a softer person and then they have shown you. And in the tower, I want you to know that they are just dying to release who they truly are, okay? And if they're unable to do so, one thing that I see here in the shadow is the fact that they could turn away in the whole relationship, connection, situationship, whatever it is that you're concerned about here may just kind of fade away because of that, okay? Because they're too afraid to step outside of the box, they're too afraid to release who they truly are, and that is one thing that they have to learn to overcome. If they do not overcome this, then obviously there is no way that you can push them out of the safe zone. There is no way how you can make them sort of um, understand that it's okay. That is something where they have to take the leap of faith. That is something where they have to come to this breakthrough, and that is exactly why we have this card in your reading, okay? So group number one, don't feel bad about the situation. Don't feel guilty because at the end of the day, there's only so much you can control when there's another person involved. So don't beat yourself up about anything, group number one, as I can see that it is not really all that much in your control. And the page of shells, last but not least, one thing that I see here is that they secretly want to tell you that they look up to you. And this is something they would never admit, maybe because they're older than you, maybe because of social stereotypes, maybe also just because of the fact that they view or regard themselves very highly and it is not very, how should I say, it is not in character for them to admit that somebody is better or somebody is smarter. You know, that could be something that is very hard for them. And I just want you to know here that you're somebody who inspires them. You're somebody where they feel like you intuitively always know what to do and they wish they had a little piece of that. They wish that they had a little bit more of that quality that you have inside of you. They wish they had a bit more of that within them. So group number one, this is a reading that I received for you. I truly hope that it gave you clarity. I hope it opened up a new sort of perspective for you. Let me know down below what really hit home and what really resonated with your person and your situation that you were inquiring about. So I hope you enjoyed this reading and I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello group number two and welcome to your reading. So you chose the pyrite group number two, which is also known as the fool's gold. And in case you are infusing water with crystals, you're creating your own elixirs, be careful using a stone like this because it is gorgeous, but at the same time, it does have certain values of toxicity, group number two, okay? Nevertheless, you can meditate with this fabulously, and it is just a stone that is great to attract wealth and abundance, which is maybe why you chose it. But I wanna get straight into your reading to figure out exactly what they're holding back on, okay? What do they secretly want to tell you? So we have wisdom as well as the promise, okay? So I definitely see a lot more attraction here than they're letting on, okay? So group number two, one thing that I see here in the promise is just, you know, feelings of romance, feelings of love, feelings of this sort of like attraction. And why do I need to think of the series Fatal Attraction when I'm speaking about this? So obviously, this is not that kind of situation, I hope at least, but I want you to know here that they have that soulmate feeling around you. They have that feeling of that deep connection that is almost incomparable, that is unique and stands out to them. So when they compare the relationship that they have with you to other relationships, it is just different, okay? There is no other way to say it. It is something that they have not felt before. And wisdom, one thing that I see here is that they secretly want to tell you that they feel as though maybe you're psychic or you have a very strong bond and connection to your intuition that is almost scary. So group number two, you may be the kind of person who can just feel things, okay? You can feel vibrations, you can feel energies, you can feel when something is going on sort of like hidden in the background. You can also feel when you think there are like subliminal messages around you and you just have this heightened intuition that is like no other. And that is something that kind of creeps them out because maybe you said like, oh, I bet this or that is gonna happen. 
and a couple days later that actually did occur and that actually did happen so they have a lot of sort of like respect for you when it comes to that because they feel as though you can feel when something is coming which can make them a little bit insecure and apprehensive to tell half truths with you or to not completely tell you the full truth just because they feel like you'll be able to sniff it out group number two so you're kind of like sherlock holmes <laughs> may i say that dare i say that group number two so then we have Adventure as well as Ice Queen. Okay, group number two, are you a little bit of an Ice Queen? Are you a little bit of, you know, a resting bitch face kind of person? I mean, I can completely relate group number two and that is something that they're maybe keeping from you. They may feel as though you're the kind of person who is a little bit um, distant. You don't like to let a lot of people into your circle because your circle is sacred and you know that the moment you let some sort of like negative entity, some sort of bad energy into your field, that that will affect you subconsciously. And they feel as though you're maybe a little too cold, you're maybe a little too hard to get to know. But group number two, I mean, okay, I may be a little bit biased, but at the end of the day, you have to protect yourself, you have to protect your energy. And if that makes you an ice queen, if that makes you somebody that is hard to get to know, then I mean, you know, we're all the same and no, we're not all the same. We're all different, so so be it. You know, not everybody has had a positive experiences in their past growing up where they feel as though they want to invite everybody in with open arms into their life. And adventure, one thing that I see here is that they find you very fun, okay? They find you somebody who is maybe well-traveled or knows a lot about different cultures, okay? So you may be someone who has seen a lot of the world or who's just fascinated by different parts of this world and how different cultures, religions function and just organize themselves. And that is one thing that I find really interesting, intriguing, and attractive about you. That you're not narrow-minded, but you're somebody who is very open-minded, very forward-thinking, and willing to basically try anything. Then we have the Four of Acorns, we have the Ace of Shells, we have the Nine of Shells, as well as the Nine of Crystals. So we have a lot of water energy here, okay? So in correlation to the fact that we have the Ice Queen in your reading, group number two, I feel as though, you know, if you've been burnt before and you're of a water sign especially, okay, I can relate. This is a kind of water sign trait that is very common. You may forgive, you may also not forgive, but one thing is that you do not forget and you do not move on all that easily. Once somebody burns you, once somebody shows you their true colors, that is it. You're not gonna wait around for it to happen again and you don't really want that kind of energy around you. So they're secretly thinking, kind of like the fact that once they burn a bridge, they're probably not going to get another bridge. They are a little bit fearful of rubbing you the wrong way, okay? But I also do see that they secretly want to tell you that you're somebody who oozes a lot of gratitude. You're somebody who oozes a lot of wisdom. And especially here in the Ace of Shells, it just naturally kind of like this feeling, this radiance of abundance. You know how when you're around some people and you think to yourself, wow, this person has great energy. This person has, you know, happy vibes, positive vibes. I want to be around them more. That is one thing that I see that they secretly think of you, something really positive. And furthermore, in the four of acorns, you're very comforting to them, okay? You're the kind of person where they feel comfort when they're around you. They feel like they can tell you anything. So you're most likely also the kind of person here, as I can see in the amount of crystals, who can keep a secret, okay? Who could keep something to themselves if somebody told you not to tell anyone else. You take that seriously, not just because you would want somebody else to do that for you, but because maybe Maybe you've had experiences where other people did not take your secret seriously, where other people said that they would give you security, but then they went and turned around and pulled the rug from under your feet and, um, okay, snakes, okay, let me just point that out right there and you're just not here for it anymore and you would not do that to anybody else. So that just shows kind of this attitude of gratitude and not feeling bitter, but also not forgetting, okay? Also not forgetting group number two. Then we have the tree of life as well as the temptress. So they secretly find you attractive again, okay? it is abundantly clear within your reading and I know in the comment section you're gonna start saying why are you giving me hope Vanessa why are you trying to say that I look any better than a potato because I don't okay I am actually a potato 
Okay, that is your opinion, group number two, okay? And that is completely fine, but they secretly find you attractive. Maybe they like potatoes, okay? If that is the only way, how I can convince you that they find you attractive, that they find you good looking, that they find you somebody that other people look at and think, oh, this person's cute. If that is the only way I can convince you, group number two, then so be it, okay? You're a cute, they like potatoes. You're a cute potato to them. So, okay, we have this sort of air of attractiveness but one thing that they would secretly like to tell you is that they feel that maybe you could take advantage of them. So that may keep them a little bit at a distance because they don't want you to be able to take your cute, sweet potato-ness and turn it against them because they have a little bit of trust issues, they have a little bit of insecurities when it comes to that, but that is a whole nother topic. In the tree of life, I want you to know here that they do feel as though, you know, there could be this planting of this tree of this family there is fertility in the air when they see you they may think of a little you know intimacy they may think that they want to get closer to you and they think of you as the kind of person who can be the rock the center of a family somebody who is responsible somebody who is able to take care of other people okay and furthermore in the tree of life i want you to know here that they think as though you're the kind of person who is destined to have magical blessings in your life they secretly think that you're somebody who is above average on the lucky scale okay you're the kind of person who they feel like cruises true through life more easily than others which is not necessarily true group number two but that is just the kind of energy that they feel around you that is what you exert that makes them think wow you know i wish that i had that much abundance i wish that i had that much opportunity and possibility so that is what they secretly think but they wouldn't say it because you know when do you actually tell somebody like, wow, I think you're luckier than other people? It's not really something you say, it's something that you just think. And maybe if you get closer, you would let that person know. But group number two, this is a reading that I received for you. I truly hope that it gave you clarity. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what really hits home with your situation. And I will see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello group number three and welcome to your reading. So you chose the tiger eye group number three and I want to get straight into your reading about what they secretly want to tell you but have not. So first and foremost we have emergence as well as the third eye portal. Okay so group number three, one thing that I see in the third eye portal is the fact that they feel a little bit confused, okay? They feel as though you're somebody who is overly intuitive, okay? You're somebody who has a lot of vision, a lot of clairvoyance and they're a little bit confused as to how you can do this. So this may be because you're very young, okay, but emotionally very mature. This may be that you're just the kind of person that baffles them, that amazes them. And they secretly think this, but they don't want to tell you for the reason of not wanting to be, you know, the person who praises you too much. They don't want it to get to your head or they don't want you to feel like you have that power, you know? We need to remember that in relationships, there is always this sort of power dynamic. There is no way how we can say that it does not exist, but within relationships, usually there is always a little bit of a balance. You know, it can be very out of balance. It can be that somebody holds a lot more power in a relationship than the other person. It could be, you know, more balance, which is obviously more healthy, but there is always, you know, some sort of power aspect and they don't want to give more power to you to into your court for whatever reason you know they may feel insecure that you may abuse it they may also have experienced something in the past where they're like no i always want to have as much power as i possibly can i don't want this person to feel like they're too good quote unquote but in the in emergence one thing that i see here is that you're the kind of person who is very creative okay they secretly feel as though you're almost like a magician okay you can make something out of nothing you're the kind of person who knows what to say in specific moments and when it really comes to getting things done it's like how did you even manage to pull everything together okay you're the kind of person who when you're stressed maybe you don't perform 
well but you perform well so what i mean by that is you don't perform well as in it is not good for you emotionally you don't feel good you maybe have a few mental breakdowns but at the end the end result of the product that you produce is good okay so you perform well in producing the product but you don't perform well because you're just stressed AF and you just don't know how to deal and there are a lot of tears group number three <laughs> then we have releasing as well as sanctuary so I definitely see as though they feel like you're a safe space you're a safe zone if this has to do with a romantic connection group number three I want you to know here in the sanctuary that you give a lot of comfort and healing but you have to be very discerning who you give this to there may be people out here in the world who want to be around you who want to be like a part of your energy because you heal them because you give them comfort but then as soon as they meet somebody else or somebody who is easier okay someone with no standards they all of a sudden they put you on kind of like the waiting bench or what is that bench called at like basketball games where the players are just sitting and you know it, why do i always have every word in german but not in english whenever i'm filming but you guys get the gist okay they kind of like put you on the side and keep you warm for when they need restoration okay when they need you to give them their energy back give them that healing and you have to be very careful with that because you're naturally most likely a healer you're naturally a helper you're somebody here who can purify who can cleanse people and who can just give them that feeling of a fresh page and a fresh beginning and that often puts you in situations where people are just trying to use you or just trying to see how they can maneuver in a way how they don't need to commit to giving you anything in return but they can take so because you're naturally more of a giver group number three you have to be careful because the thing with takers is that a lot of takers don't know when to stop and a lot of givers don't know when to stop giving either. So you have to know when to cut the cord group number three. That is one thing that I see within your reading that your guides want you to know that is really important for you. So they would obviously never tell you how much value that they get out of this connection with you. They wouldn't tell you how much they kind of feel like this connection benefits them just because they don't want to give you the power of knowing that and then having you maybe cut the cord sooner than they would like you to, okay? So you are very beneficial to their life. That is something that they secretly think but are obviously not going to say group number three. Then we have the Knight of Acorns as well as the Nine of Shells. So in the Knight of Acorns, this is a Knight of Fire, okay? Fire signs. One thing that I see here is that they secretly think that you're very driven. You're secretly, they secretly think that you're somebody who can go very far in life. And the fact that you are unknowing when it comes to that, okay? You are naive, group number three. They feel as though you're so undervaluing yourself, but let's move a little closer into this topic, okay? So we have the five of shells as well as love. So they feel a lot of love for you as a person, and they also feel hope that you will come to a realization that you're worth so much more. But right now, they feel like you're really undervaluing yourself. You're somebody who is happy or somebody who has an attitude of gratitude, but at the same time, you're unwilling to accept that maybe you just deserve recognition. Maybe you just deserve applause at this point in your life. What are you waiting for? There's so many people who are taking all these trophies, all this recognition, all of this, wow, you're doing amazing, sweetie. Meanwhile, their work is half as good as yours or they're providing other people this world with half as much as you are. So don't feel like you always need to overcompensate. Don't feel like you always need to put so much more out there just to take a little bit of recognition, just to take a little dollar or two here for your work, especially if you're self-employed okay one thing that they secretly think is that you're undervaluing you're undercharging you're putting yourself in a position where you're putting out a lot and you're worth more than you're actually willing to ask for group number three then we have the nine of hearts we have perception as well as the amethyst so let's see exactly what else they're thinking but not saying so in the nine of hearts one thing that i see here is that they feel 
very um, sort of like lovey feelings when it comes to you. We already have that in love. They feel like you're a very trustworthy person. They feel like you're not a backstabber. You probably never would. And furthermore, they feel as though things are in harmony around you, okay? You're, you have the kind of energy that just puts everything into perspective that allows a lot of energies that otherwise would challenge each other, that would bump heads, you allow those energies to be in harmony. You're kind of like the glue that keeps things together when you're at, for instance, a family function and otherwise people would be arguing or fighting. You're the kind of person who can just calm the entire situation down. So you are of a lot of social value more than you have probably ever come to notice group number three. In perception, one thing that I see here is that they definitely feel as though you have this big veil of illusion. As I said, undervaluing yourself and not seeing how much more recognition you probably could get or deserve. Meanwhile, there are other people who are getting so much, um, so much recognition, who are getting praised so much for literally just doing one sit up. Meanwhile, you're here working out all the machines at the gym. You know what I mean? So allow yourself to look at yourself a little more critically, group number three, because you're not doing that enough, okay? You are looking at yourself critically in the way how you feel like you need to put so much more out there in order to just get half of what other people get for putting also half the workout so you're really just taking way too little look at yourself critically in the light of hey do i value myself enough do i value what i have to offer in this world or am i completely undermining everything that i'm capable of then in the amethyst one thing that i see here is that they do secretly think though that you're somebody who has the confidence who has it in them to transform so there are obviously people that you may look at and think to yourself, well, they might just always be overly loving, overly caring, and just the kind of person to maybe just be walked all over. And I know this sounds really awful, group number three, but there are some people that others may look at and think that is just who they're destined to be, but not with you, group number three. I see that they think that you're somebody who can change, you're somebody who is capable of transformation, you're somebody who is able to just go through this complete 180, come out certain of who you are, and take what you deserve. So they definitely feel as though there is room for glow up, okay, for you to turn into a boss, to turn your situation into kind of like a situation where you grew from it, where you came to a realization, to an epiphany, and you changed what did not resonate with you, your worth, and your value. So group number three, this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it insightful and that it gave you a little bit of clarity. Let me know down in the comment section what really hit home from your reading, and I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello group number four and welcome to your reading. So you chose the die upside group number four. I want to do a little close up for you just to see the stone of your choice. It is so gorgeous. It is a very grounding stone. It is a stone that truly connects you to the nature. So I want to move straight into your reading to figure out exactly what they're secretly wanting to tell you. We have Gaian awakening as well as exiled. So one thing that I see here is the fact that they feel as though you're getting ready for an ascension, okay? They feel as though you're very close to another glow up in your life, to another leveling up group number four, and that is one thing that they're maybe even a little afraid of. Have you ever had a friend where it's like, they wanted you to do well, but as soon as you were doing better than them, it's like, poof, you know, a ghost. They're all of a sudden gone. They're all of a sudden nowhere to be found or they treat you completely differently, okay? They treat you with less respect, with less love and just less of like a caring energy. I mean, can I get a thumbs up, a little comment if you can relate to group number four? Furthermore, one thing that I see here in Exiled is the fact that they feel as though you might be a little isolated because of this, okay? Your next glow up may leave you feeling alone, may leave you really realizing who is there for you and who is only there for you as long as you're not blowing up too much, as long as you're not being the beautiful shining light that you could be because there are a lot of people who do feel intimidated as soon as you step into who you are meant to be and as soon as you're unafraid to just show the world what you've got to offer group number four so know that this is kind of suppressive energy that you don't want very much of in your life 
Then we have the third eye portal as well as sanctuary. So one thing that I see here that they would secretly like to tell you is just the fact that you're somebody who is very comforting. That is one thing that I see in Sanctuary. You're the kind of person who will help another person out, whether you know them, whether you don't know them, whether they have done you wrong, like depending on the situation, you're gonna be like, okay, you know what? You're kind of like a mean person. You're kind of like not very nice, but guess what? If it is about life or death, okay, fine, I'll help you. Okay, fine, you know, I'll try and do the right thing. So you're somebody who has good karma group number four you're somebody who shows that you know there can be forgiveness there can be healing from the past and you can move on and just show that you're strong you're the kind of person who doesn't feel like you have to be petty forever you're the kind of person who feels like true strength and really actually leveling up has a lot to do with not caring about what has happened in the past you take the lessons you learn from them that is called wisdom but you do not let the past affect your present okay because that is when you're still living in the past but when you actually crystallize the pain the hurt all of the things that you've been through when you compound that into something where there is no emotional attachment especially negative emotional attachment that is when you got wisdom okay that is when you're the kind of person that's just cool that's chill that people look up to and think like wow this person is wise this person is mature so in the third eye portal one thing that i see here is that they secretly would like to tell you that they feel as though you're very connected to your body and your soul they feel as though you're the kind of person who has um, a little bit of hypersensitivity when it comes to figuring out what is wrong with yourself as well as other people. So you can feel when somebody is having a bad day. You can feel when somebody needs help just as much as you can feel when something is off with your body, okay? You have that hypersensitivity where you realize when help is needed, when you realize when something is wrong and something needs to be checked out, okay? So you're almost like a little sniffer dog, okay? That can sniff when something is wrong. But let's move further into your reading. We have the 10 of shells, the three of crystals. We have the nine of acorns as well as the six of feathers. So group number four, one thing that I see here in the three of crystals is the fact that they find you to be somebody very productive and hardworking, okay? The three of crystals shows me that they look up to you for your worth ethic and furthermore in the nine of acorns, they feel as though you're somebody who has a lot of power to persevere, okay? You're not somebody who gives up. You're not a quitter, okay? You're not somebody who will hit one little road bump and give up. So they look up to you for that, but they would not tell you that because this is about what they're secretly wanting to tell you, but they, they can't, okay? They can't because they don't wanna hype you up too much. They don't wanna be the person who is putting you in a spotlight where they feel like you may all of a sudden feel like you're better than them. And that does not need to be you, group number four, but that is probably attached to their fears, to what they're going through emotionally. And furthermore, in the Ten of Shells, one thing that I see here is that they feel as though you're somebody who is very focused on your overall well-being and you're like the kind of person who is willing to adjust, say, your diet, your lifestyle, just your clothing, how much you walk every day, how much you're on your phone, just to ensure that you're getting the most out of life as well as your health, your well-being. So they feel as though things in the earthly realms are important to you, okay? Your health, your time, and making sure that you're utilizing everything as efficiently as you possibly can. So they secretly feel like maybe you're even a little bit anal about that, maybe you're even a little over the top when it comes to that, but that is their opinion, okay? Whether that is true or not, that is of course something very subjective. Then we have the night wind, we have thinking of you, as well as a hidden gift. So group number four, it is very clear that this person thinks about you more than you may have ever expected. That is one thing that I see here, but the thoughts are loving. And know that when somebody is low-key, almost a little bit afraid of your glow up, when somebody is low-key, kind of concerned with you leaving them behind, yes, that may be wrapped in a little bow of a little bit of jealousy as well, but at the same time, keep in mind that that means that they look up to you. That means that there is a certain amount of love there, of care, because the opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. So hate means that they actually still care. Jealousy means that they still care. The fact that they may, you know, 
be afraid of you going too far in life and leaving them behind. It shows that they care, that they don't want to lose you. And at the same time, they don't want to be embarrassed in front of you. They don't want to feel like they are this small compared to you who is like huge, okay? And in the night wind, I want you to know here that they secretly think that you're somebody who faces their fears and they envy that. They wish they could do more of that. They wish they could be more courageous like you. They secretly think that you're somebody who can take leaps into the unknown in order to achieve their goals, in order to come closer to their dreams. And that is one thing where I feel as though there is a little bit of sadness, okay? They are sec secretly thinking that there is an ending coming with your connection. They are secretly thinking that your connection is maybe not strong enough to keep going. They feel as though maybe you are going to leave them behind and because they're already thinking that, they are subconsciously sabotaging the connection because they don't know how to deal with the fact that yes, you may take big leaps, okay? You may come to this big ascension in your life, to this leveling up, to this transformation, to a better spot that just puts you closer to your goals and closer to what you consider success, which they may also see as success, which would put them further behind if they're not able to overcome those fears and to take big steps, big leaps, like you are doing group number four. So they do secretly feel a little bit intimidated, a little bit of worry, a little bit of worry, and just the fact that there may have to be a new beginning with somebody else, just because they feel like they may lose you in the process. They feel as though your transition is maybe so strong, so radical, so big, that they can't keep up, or like you may forget about them. So they're kind of like subconsciously already preparing, maybe already being a little bit more distant, maybe already thinking of how they are going to live life without you because they are worried of this glow up and of maybe losing you. So group number four, this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that it gave you clarity and insight. Let me know down below what really hit home with you and your situation and the person that you're inquiring about. And I will see you in one of my upcoming videos.